Hello and welcome back to our Astro Crash Course. We're continuing our lessons and we're going to be on lesson five. In the previous lesson, we took a look how to set up our basic loader for us to get data from our Strapi instance to our Astro application. And once we get that data, we went ahead and just rendered the description. And that's exactly what you see here. That means that we are able to get our data from our API. What's cool if I go to our Strapi instance and take a look at our global single types and we take a look at the banner here, this data is coming from our Strapi application and we're able to see it here in our Astro application. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start building out these components. And to help us with this, I already created lesson five notes and I'll share this gist in the description to this video. This is just gonna make it easier so you don't have to watch me type. And also for you, you could just grab the code snippet. The most important part is understanding what the code does than sitting there and typing, especially with all the things that AI and code completion allows us to do is being able to understand the code, why we did it, and focus on the logic and putting things together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this gist and you're going to see this strappy image component. Now I wanted to create a component and I'll walk through what it does. So let's go ahead and copy it. Once you got it copied, let's go ahead to our Astra application and inside our components folder, we're going to create a new file called strappy image.astro. Now, before we go over this component, granted, I could have made a much simpler way and not having to create this strappy image component, but this is something that I use in a lot of my other Astro projects and I didn't want to constantly recreate this. So I created this one snippet to kind of cover all the use cases. Here, I'm pulling image from Astro assets and I'm going to call it Astro image just so it's just more clear to me. And we're defining our props. And here we have a all the typical props that you see, source, alt, height, width, class, loading, quality, responsive, aspect ratio, fallback, and sizes. And we're setting some of these uh, default, like loading lazy, quality 80. Do you want it to responsive? True. Aspect ratio, auto, just to make it easier to make our images more responsive. And for a fallback, I did not add an images folder with the fallback in my Astro app here in the public folder. This is something that we probably want to have. So we have a fallback image and I'll tell you why I did that. And the reason for that, I do have get strappy media function that we'll talk uh, more about in just a little bit. And we do have our happy path here, but for some reason, if this fails, we don't want it just to return a null or nothing. We're just returning a fallback image. So our application may not display the correct image, but at least it's not going to crash. And so that's why we're using the fallback. For now, let's go over the code. So if we pass our source and it doesn't exist, then we're just gonna exit early and not return anything because the image source doesn't exist. Great, so that's you know nothing we could do with it. And then we have this other if statement that basically checks that for height and width, you can't pass a value lower than zero right? You cannot have a negative height or negative width. So we just want to have that basic check for styles. What I started to do instead of putting my styles inside the actual HTML, I decided to put it in a styles object and that allows me to keep my HTML clean. As you could see here, I just have my div and I have my class attribute and I'm just saying styles and I'm referencing dot container style, which is uh, what we have uh, here. And then I'm also able to reuse these tiles in get aspect ratio class. So here what we're doing when we check for the aspect ratio that we pass, we're able to apply the appropriate styles that I defined here in the styles object. Then we have get strappy media, which is more specific to strappy. And this basically checks is your strappy image hosted on a third party platform like Cloudinary. Is it being stored locally on your in your file system inside your repo? Based on that information, the structure of the URL is going to be different. So this just makes sure that you're always getting the correct URL. And what we're doing then, we're taking that source, if we have it, we're passing into our get strappy media and that will return the appropriate image URL. And if something's wrong, it's undefined. Again, we do early return because there's no valid uh, URL present. And then we continue. 
And then for the alt tag, if someone forgets to provide an alt tag, instead of kind of doing something random, we're just saying, hey, return image and the width and height. And then here for image classes, we're taking our image styles and we are appending the images from our get aspect ratio class that we saw above. For responsive sizes, we're just checking every passing sizes or responsive. And if responsive the, uh, exists, we're go ahead and adding this to our styles. And if it doesn't, we just set undefined and you could see that we're using it here. Feel free to play around with this component uh, to check it. But I know it looks a little bit more complex than you probably expected. But the idea is I wanted to create a generic strappy image component that I could use in multiple Astro projects. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But now that we have it, we could reuse this component anywhere it's required. So now let's start building out our banner component. Let's navigate to our components folder, create a new file, and we are going to call it banner.astro. We are going to start by defining our front matter. And the first thing we're going to do is import our types. We created a T banner and it lives in our types folder that you could check out and see all the types we added from the previous lessons. Now that we have our types, let's use them. So we're going to create an interface for this component, which is going to be the type of banner types that we created. We're going to destructure our types. You can additionally destructure the rest of the fields here, but to me, this gets a little bit confusing. For instance, we have is visible and so on, but I like to keep things simple. So we're going to destructure them one more time. And our data has the following items is visible and Norse are autocorrect is helping us link and description. Fantastic. And here we could do an early return and check if the banner is visible, continue, but if it's not visible, return null. And so now what we're able to do is go to our layout and we don't have to check is visible. We could just check if we have a banner. And a lot of people say, why would you check here? And then also check on component level. Uh, to me, I feel like creating these little null checks and being able to terminate if some data is missing early just makes it much harder for the app to break. And so this is something I've been doing, but let me know in the comments if you have tried different patterns. I would love to hear about it. Just so you don't have to watch me type, I'm going to paste in the styles that we're going to use. And you could either go ahead and pause the screen and type them out here, but I'm also gonna provide this gist with the final components and notes that you could use. And then here, we're just going to create a div for our banner. And for now, all we're going to do is just display the description to make sure that it works. So now we have this basic idea of a banner. If we go back into layout, we're going to here at the top, let's import our banner from our components folder and our components called banner. And now what we could do, instead of just having this div, we could go ahead and use our component. If you just do it this way, it's gonna complain and we could see that we're expecting data props. And thank you TypeScript for reminding us. And here, what we're going to do is pass in our banner data. And once we have that, and we navigate to our front end, you're gonna notice that we have our basic styling and we have our text displaying here, which is kind of cool. So now let's finish up the rest of the component. So back in our banner component, navigate to where we have our description and we're going to replace it here. We're going to have a P tag, which is going to have our banner text. Then we have a link for our link. And here we're checking if the link is external. If so, it's gonna open up a new window in the browser, which I think is a good pattern to have. And then we're going to go ahead and display our link. And again, you could either pause the screen and copy it from here. And this is again, basic HTML or JSX like syntax where we're able to inline pass our JavaScript, for instance, where we're passing the description here. And if you take a look at the front end, we could see that our styling is a little bit better. We have learned about Strapi, build API fast that your non-technical user could manage. And we have a link here. And finally, after this P tag, we have a div, which is the container for our button. So we have a button with an SVG. And again, 
the point here is not to focus on the basics of HTML. Uh, this is something you should be familiar and to kind of focus more on the Astro specific things, we will go ahead and just move through things quickly. But if you have questions, definitely let me know in the comments. And I am again, gonna provide this uh, gist. Now taking a look at our component, we could see that our banner looks great. And one thing our banner should be above the header. So back in your layout.astro, let's go ahead and move the header below the banner. Okay, this looks much better. And if we try to click this button to close it out, it's not gonna work. And we are actually gonna use vanilla JavaScript to add this behavior. So let's go ahead and do that now. In our banner component, right after the div, we remember from previous lectures, we talked about that you can put your JavaScript between your script tags. And that's exactly what we're going to do. If you take a look at our button, we have an ID of dismiss button. So let's go ahead and target that button via its ID. So here I'm going to say const dismiss button equals document dot get element by ID. And we're going to go ahead and provide the name, which is this, what did I call it here? Dismiss button. I could just copy it here because you know what? Typing is not my forte. Let me refresh that. Typing and speaking is not my forte. So now that we targeted our button, since we have access to it, we could do something with it. But before that, let's go ahead and target our banner. If we take a look, we have an ID for our banner. And this is basically the element that we want to hide when we click the button. So we do have to get access to it. So let's go ahead and do it now. So we're going to say const banner and you guessed it. We're going to use document get element by ID and the name is banner because that's what we called it. Now that we are targeting our button and banner, we're going to say if, because we want to make sure that they were actually selected. We're going to say if dismiss button and banner, then we want to do something. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our dismiss button and we're going to add an event listener. And this is going to be on click. And what we want to happen is we want to run a function that will do something. And what is that going to do? It's going to take our banner element, update the style display property to be none. So once that's done, just to quickly review, we have our button with ID of dismiss button. We also have our banner and what we're doing, we are targeting both those elements. Then we checking if we have both those elements, we're going to go ahead on dismiss button at an event listener, which will be on click, which will go ahead and set our display value of our banner to none. So now let's go back to our front end. And here, if I click the X, it disappears. Obviously, if I refresh, it's going to be back again, which is exactly the functionality I intended. And in Strapi, if you don't want it to show up at all, you're able to go into global and banner set to false, publish. And when you rebuild your Astra application, notice the banner just not going to ever show up. But we want to have that banner. Maybe you have an announcement that you want to make. So we'll set it back to true. And when we restart our Astra application, boom, we have our banner. And before we finish, if we go back to our global page, notice that after our banner, we have our header and our footer. So we'll create these components in the next video. But in this video, let's go ahead and prepare us for the next lesson. So here in the layout Astra component, what we could do, we could say const header equals global data dot data dot header. We could also do that for the footer equals global data dot data dot footer. And this is kind of cool to do this way. And what we could do here in our placeholder text, we could just say header and it'll probably fail. Let me look. Yeah, it's going to be object object. If you want to see your object or the data that you're returning, of course, you could console log it. But this is where my trick of JSON that stringify comes in. And I just like to do it kind of quickly to kind of see, hey, we're getting the data that we need. And then we're going to do the same thing for the footer. We're going to say 
JSON dot stringify and footer. And now when we go to our application, yes, it looks ridiculous, but you could see that we're getting our header data and we're getting our footer data. So we know that our API is working. So all we need to do is pass this data to our component, which we will do in the next video. But finally, to finish up here, this looks okay, but we could destructure this from our global data. So what we could do instead of saying this, we could say const and destructure all the attributes and say global.data or an empty object. And notice this still works. And if you want to add an additional kind of way to think about and handle errors, we know that our response from Strapi has an error object. And if there is an error, we could check for it. So after getting the global data, we could have an if statement, which basically says, hey, if there's error, console log the error message and throw a new error. So that way we could see if something's wrong during our build time. So with that being said, our application slowly coming along. And once we get the foundation, we'll be able to move much faster. But today we took a look at how to create our banner component. We also added our strappy image and we know that we're already getting the data for both our header and footer. So in the next video, we could finally finalize both those components and make our website start taking shape. So by the end of the next video, we should have our header and footer. I'm excited for the next lesson. So I can't wait to see you there in a little bit, but go ahead, give yourself a big congratulations, pat yourself on the back, get a little drink and snack, and I'll see you in a little bit.